So in this watercolor painting tutorial, we'll be painting this apple. You'll learn how to blend smoothly with watercolor and the four most important things to focus on while doing realism. So let's get started. We're gonna start with the sketch and be very loose with the sketch. Um, I wanna go very light because on this side of the apple, it gets so light, it almost blends right into the paper. So apples are round, but if they're not perfectly round, which is great because our hand doesn't do, typically doesn't do a perfect circle. So this is a great uh, problem to have. All right, so there we go. There's our apple, the shape of it. Um, I'm using a watercolor pencil so that it blends into the other watercolor. All right, now let's see, let's get the shadow shape in here. Go something like that. The trick to realism is uh, proportions and um, not just proportions, but uh, value. Portions and value. So that's what we're going to focus on. So we got the proportions of the apple uh, fairly well. That's where we'll say the stem comes up. And whenever I'm drawing, I'm, I'm noticing where things kind of um, start compared to other lines you have. So the shadow, kind of like that, all right. And then I'm just, I'm not gonna put in like a whole bunch of detail. I'm just kind of gonna give myself some guidelines as to where the shadow is. And there's definitely this area is in shadow. A lot of this is in shadow and there's this interesting harsh shadow right there that comes up all right and you can give yourself a little bit of lines to remind yourself when you're painting with a brush what direction you want to move this the brush all right so there is our very very light sketch next is the water. Now, we want something very, very, very light right here. So I'm going to uh, wet this brush. You know what, I'm gonna use, yeah, no, I'll use this brush. Wet this brush and we are going to use, uh, it's always good to have a, um, a swatch so you actually know what the colors are so we're gonna get this light yellow and um, the thing is with this light yellow we uh, we don't want it to be very strong so I'm gonna come into this area but it there we go leave room for um, the highlight and then clean my brush take some of this and actually go off to the side just a little bit right there with my clean brush clean my brush I'm gonna dry it I'm gonna take some of this up because we want this to be so light over here where it almost just blends into the paper. Okay. Now we're gonna take this uh, same color and go all the way, all the way around, going in the direction of the apple. Leaving some white spots there, because it's pretty light right there. All right. Got a 
look at this area. This I'm finding that it's best to go light and then dark when it comes to watercolors. And the brightest that highlight you can ever have is the white of the paper. So you want to leave those areas very, 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 very light. Or with nothing. Okay, now, um, to create harmony in this drawing, even though this is going to be a shadow in the shadow, I'm going to go ahead and put, put a layer, even though it's going to be dark, I want it to have a dark that seems like it belongs there with this color. So, there we go. So by putting that underlying color, we are making it feel like all the shadows and stuff that we do later in that area belong because it's all the same color underneath. And that helps your lighting be more believable. going to get really dark there but as it gets dark there it's going to okay I see an area that needs to be lightened up like right here so I'm taking some of that paint off using a fairly damp brush drying it and now soaking, soaking it up. There we go. All right. All right, awesome, awesome. All right, next, we're gonna get some of this putting green. I'm gonna try to do the next layer. Just remember, go in the direction of the apple skin. It will just start to look like it really is really is uh, going in that direction and, and starts to look more like an object. All right now this gets darker up here. A beautiful green. Okay, and we're gonna darken this area. We're gonna darken that. Now, if you want to dull your green, you need to do add some of the opposite color in it, and it will dull it. We want it more dull on this side. So the attention is more on the highlighted side. To make our highlights look more beautiful, we, we want to uh, make sure and darken up the darkest areas so they complement each other. So, opposite of green, this is where if you're not familiar with it, a good color wheel would, would help, but the opposite of green on a color wheel. So a nice, a, a good purple, 
color would really make this start to be more dull, which is what we want. So I'm getting a little purple. See that? That purple just dulls it. And that's a good thing. We want it dull here to make the brightest part look beautiful. Eye catching. All right, and with that purple, we're actually going to start to put in our shadow here. here. We're just going to um, allude to it. Like it's coming. This is where it's going to be. We also want to hint at the, the color here. If you want your paintings to look a little bit more dynamic and fun to watch, I mean, fun to look at, um, using opposite colors for shadows or dulling things really helps with that. Just your eye will subconsciously think, huh, this is interesting. Why is this so cool? And it won't even know exactly why, but it's because you're using complementary colors or opposites. And And the darker and darker that gets, the more realistic it's going to be. So, drying my brush so I can soak up some of these harsh edges right here so it doesn't look so like, hey, I'm watercolor. Um, the smooth transitions, when you want them to be smooth, will uh, make you not think immediately, oh, that's watercolor. All right, we want some more of this dull color down here. There we go. All right, this area. All right, now we're gonna start putting in some of the darker green. And we're going to do that by putting in some black first. Yeah, there we go. And I'm just letting the paper take what it wants to right now. And any part that I want to blend better, I just dry my brush and then go back over that. Okay, that's a really good trick. Dry your brush, go back over it. Now watercolor, uh, it is on a time. Like once I started, I, I pretty much need to keep going until I finish. Um, for some of these for some of these tricks that I'm doing there are some times where you just absolutely have to stop and let it dry before you put another layer on otherwise it will get muddy 
and we don't want it to get muddy that's for sure but right now we actually want we want some things to blend together while they're wet like this Look at the brush does some cool, cool stuff. Just random stuff that looks good. Looks like it belongs. We want some black. All right, now. Before this area dries too much, I want to blend that out. So what do we do? We dry, wash, and then dry the brush really good, and then come back in and we start blending. Look at that. So little, little tricks like that help a lot. The darker we make these shadows, the more it's going to start to look like it's popping off the page, which is awesome. And realism, like I said at the beginning, the most important things is getting your proportions right and then getting your values right. And then right after that, the next one would be getting your colors right. Because you can make things look pretty realistic, even with the wrong colors. But man, if you want, if you want to tell a story the right way, then you better get your colors right. So right now we're focusing, we got the proportions right, we're getting the values, and we're also, as we're getting the values, focusing on color. And this is really going to, the more we focus on color and values from here on out, the more it's going to start to look more and more realistic. I would say we're like halfway there. See how letting the brush just kind of take some of the what's on there, what's on the brush, let it touch the paper and let the paper take what it wants. soften this area just a little bit. I also want to start getting this uh, stem colored. So we'll start again with the lightest. There we go. I'm going to come back in with uh, some more, um, I'd say red ochre. Make this area kind of pop a little bit. There we go. Make this area pop a little bit. What do I mean by pop? I guess just stand out, right? Stand out, catch your eye. Okay. All right, and 
this could be smoother, so thankfully it's not too wet yet, so we can go back in with a damp brush, and there we go. I'm not swearing, I'm saying damp. Okay, <clears throat> now we want to get this black color to be very, very opaque. Opaque means it's not very trans, trans, uh, transparent. Yeah, see, this is very opaque. And that's a good thing. We want it to be very opaque here. We want it to be very, very opaque here. Now, watercolor in general is is very... Um, it's usually very transparent. So the trick is to get quite a bit of water in there and then um, mix it a lot like this. Just keep going like that and then you're going to get this really nice. Really, really nice dark color. Okay, now... No, no, no. We gotta be careful here. Gotta be careful. Why? Well, if we're not careful, we won't blend this out in time. And it's gonna look weird. So I grabbed the, the purple again. This purple really makes the green stand out and makes it look really interesting. And we're right now we're on a time crunch right now. We gotta we we only have a little bit of time blend this black out and make it smoother okay only a little bit of time and then we're gonna just go in the direction of the apple Dry that brush. And see, I tried the brush and then I come back in and uh, took a lot there. Hold on. There we go. See how s some of those markings from the brush, see how the brush is, has a uh, little frayed uh, bristles all over? That's That's great. That's gonna give us some extra cool detail uh, as we express the skin of this apple. Those little lines are gonna be helpful. All right. It comes over the edge. Paying attention, I'm going in the direction that I think the skin would would go. Coming along, coming along. Ah, here's an area that I almost forgot about. Got to work on this before it dries. That's no good. So, go back in real quick. Use those bristles with a little bit. Ooh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. All right, a lot of painting to make it enjoyable. You kind of... You, you you think of the brush and the paint as a team and you let them do, have some choices. You, you don't try to control them. You actually work with them. You, uh, you trust them to do a lot of really cool things that you couldn't, not, you couldn't do if you were, uh, you couldn't even think about doing. So, see that's coming along, that is coming along, now this very, very, very tip here, this edge, we're going to dull it with the purple, remember, purple will dull it, there we go, and then, yeah, and another thing, after I would say proportions, number one, priority of making things look realistic proportions because if you get your values right but your proportions are off 
it's going to look weird. People are going to be like, oh, why is the guy's eye bigger than the other eye? Why is the guy's nose on his forehead? Like proportions, they're number one. Then value, then color, and then um, uh, oh man, I forgot what I was going to say next. Value. Oh, oh, I know what I was going to say next. Um, texture is very important, which is what we're doing with these these brush marks. Um, this, this is all creating texture. Getting some nice, beautiful texture there. Okay, but um, gradients, gradients. So what do I mean by that? From going from darker to a lighter color, the more you can do it gradually um, in places, um, it just, it's so like, our eyes are like attracted to that. We're attracted to gradients. Like we just, we love it. And I, I, I'm not sure why, but we do. And so when, when we're trying to do realism, if there's things that on your, whatever you're drawing, if there is gradients on there, um, try your best to actually capture those gradients because it's going to really make your, your drawing look realistic. Right. And there's definitely on this apple with the light hitting it and stuff, there's definitely lots of room for gradients. Okay. And what we want to do is dry our brush a little bit and then work with this in the direction. There we go. There we go. There we go. And in this area, there's a little bit more texture here. So do that. A little bit more there. There we go. All right, and I do want that to pop a little bit more. So we'll come back in and we're gonna use some burnt umber. Again, like I said earlier, it's so good to have swatches because look at this. This is what the burnt umber looks like, but this is what it looks like when I'm getting it out. Like I would never guess this ends up being that, okay? And we're gonna take that burnt umber, ooh yeah, that just makes this pop a lot more. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. There we go. And on our reference, there is more white right here. There's white here more. See, I'm lifting off some of that, um, some of the paint that's already gone down there. Um, but don't worry, there when when this is dry we are going to do the final um details with some colored pencil it's one of my favorite tricks to use some colored pencil on top of watercolor you can it, it just takes it can take things to the very next level so see look i can take some water and drop it in like that then dry my brush and then come back in and soak up some areas that are spot but what's going to do even better is um, colored pencil. We'll, co we'll come back in and fix that up later. All right. So this area, I just want to kind of smooth out some of this. There we go. And I really like how there is some green showing in our reference photo right here. So I'm going to put some of that green in right there. Ooh, that's beautiful. Okay, um, capturing reality to me is, is not only fun, but um, it's a challenge, it's fun, and it's so rewarding when you're actually able to do it, because it's, it's, not, it's not easy. If it was easy, every, everyone could do it, but it's, it, t it really takes, if you want to draw realistically or paint realistically, um, I would say it takes patience. 
That's like the number one trait. It takes patience. Um, you gotta have patience to try. You gotta got you gotta have patience to um, fail and learn from it, and then try again and fail and try again. At, like almost everyone who does realism. Uh, I would say is a fairly patient person, at least in that area of their life. They have to be fairly patient because realism doesn't, it doesn't happen quickly. So that I'm getting the black to be opaque. I don't want it to be very transparent right here. This is one of the darkest areas where it hits the light right there, draws attention. And as we put in this really dark shadow, it's going to make all the other colors kind of just pop more. Da, da, da. Yeah, that's beautiful. I'm being careful around the edge because Apples around and I don't want there to be like a whole bunch of uh, weird um, bumps and stuff on this apple. show you a wet on wet technique real quick. I'm going to get this all wet like this. Just getting it all wet. There we go. Now I'm going to take I'm going to take that black and I'm going to just start bringing it out. As it gets closer to out here, I don't want it to be as dark. And so um, I'm gonna be using more of that Van Dyke Brown that I used up here. And then what do we do if we want to blend this in better? We wash our brush real quick dry it off real good we go back in we start just start moving the brush back and forth just like this try it off Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And you know what? We're going, in, in this situation, I'm tempted to use like a soft mop brush just to see if it would um, blend it better. But we've used this one brush for the whole thing. And I think it's cool if we can finish this whole thing with just this one brush. This area right here, can we can we blend it better? There we go. Alright, you know what we need? We need more black right here. We need more black here. More black here. And 
you can tell that there's a lot of water here because it's causing the the paper to um, bend a little bit. But the good thing about watercolor paper is that if it bends a lot later, you can actually um, get um, wet it later, um, wet the other side of it, and put some heavy books on there, and it will dry flat again. So it's easily fixable. Maybe I'll show you in another video uh, how I do that with this one. All right, so we can go back into the darkest areas and darken them up even a little bit more. So on this side, I like letting out some of the detail there. Okay. See, it gets darker on this side of the shadow. There we go. There we go. All right, and there's a little bit of detail we could add right here. Just down here. There we go. Now we got to blend this area in better. Let's get some purple in there. Get some green. And then we're going to blend this better. Yeah. There we go. All right. some more of that beautiful green there. Help it to blend in here. And so let's just go over quickly what we've done so far. Proportions were the first thing. The second thing we needed to focus on was values as we put in the colors. And the colors was pretty much with the values uh, in importance. And then is the gradients and the textures, the details, those things. All right, and those details are really what sells it at the end. When, and the more details you do, um, the more you capture like texture and patterns and um, gradients. The more you do that, the more people have to lean in and be like, wait, is that a photo? What is that? You know? Yeah. From far back, something that's not extremely detailed can look very realistic. Um, but the more details, the more you get the gradients right, the more you get the details right, um, the more people have to start guessing and getting closer and closer. Like, wait, I can't tell if this is a drawing, a painting, or a photograph. And I like that. I like to trick the eye into thinking that um, that you're looking at uh, something real that's been hand-drawn. I think that's so cool. Right. And I'm using some of this um, dark purple to really um, make the, the shadow a little bit more interesting. This purple next to the, 
next to the blues, I think is beautiful. Now too much of it and it, and it won't, yeah, it, it will uh, draw too much attention to it. So we don't, we don't want to put so much to it. We want it to just kind of hint at it. There we go. All right, what can we do? Well, we can take some of this blue or, or green, and start putting in some more texture here. Even, even out some of this. That, there we go. That. I'm going in the direction of the skin of the apple. It's really important to help sell. If you're trying to make it look realistic, you want to do that. Um, I'm also going to get some of that purple, some of that green dry it off a little bit so purple green okay come back in here a little bit okay dry it off blend it in dry it off blend it in Putting in a little bit more textures there. Okay, so we could technically say, okay, we're done. There's your apple. But if, if you want to go to the next level, this is where I'd get out the, the colored pencils and take it to the next level. Now, we can definitely um, put in... We, we could work on this forever, really. I could go back and get this looking more and more realistic. Let's see, there we go. Right there, that line right there. Oh, that's beautiful. From the direction. All right, so, so hopefully you're learning some of the tricks to realism in uh with watercolor all right um all right i'm going to get my colored pencils i'm going to show you which kind i use all right so these are my favorite colored pencils you got the karen dash swiss made um, these are some of the most expensive colored pencils you can buy and it's just because they the, the light fast is amazing. Uh, permanent color, like the, the sunlight doesn't like fade them like other colored pencils. The, my other favorite, and I, I would say they're tied, is Faber-Cassell. And Faber-Cassell, the polychromos, and it's important that it's, that it's polychromos because they also make another Faber-Cassell that's not polychromos and it's not as high quality. The polychromos is gonna cost a little bit more but it's a high quality and it also has really good light fast. But the reason why I really like polychromos is because um, you can sharpen them really sharp and they don't break easily. Um, I've used most of my life the Prismacolors and what's frustrating is the lead is soft and you sharpen it and then you go to uh, draw or paint or you know draw or color in something and it, and it just breaks. And then you have to sharpen it again and it breaks. And Faber-Castell, you can sharpen it and it stays sharp. It's beautiful. Now, as far as whites is concerned, out of all the whites I've tried for colored pencil, Karen Dash um, makes, I, I in my opinion, the best white colored pencil. So we're gonna use the Karen Dash right now to put in some of these uh, spots, like the little, I, I don't know what they're called, like little light sun spots maybe, okay? And what we'll do is hint at them, and I'm not going hard because this, we don't want them to stand out too much, so towards the shadow, I'm just hinting at, at them right there, just hinting at it. 
There we go. See that? That's a little sunspot. There we go. Just a few. You don't want to do too many. And again, I'm going in the direction of the skin of the apple, paying attention to that. And I'm trying to kind of make them more sporadic. Another trick in realism that I found is like, we kind of naturally want to space things out like evenly, but don't. The more things are kind of like randomly spaced out, the more they're actually going to make us feel like we're looking at something real. Like our brain is so programmed to see like patterns that if we just do like three dots in a row, that's going to draw attention that we actually don't want to draw attention to. All right, th there's some spots up here that are like a little bit brighter. So we'll get those. Some that come out of the shadow. And then to really sell this, th these spots being so bright. We'll come in here, there. All right, now this is gonna be awesome. Right here, I've been looking forward to putting in this little highlight. Just wraps around it. And this highlight, this little highlight right there, makes the dark look darker. I like that, that's so cool. There we go. There's some spots up here. Right. And I'm not I'm not pushing too hard on this because I I want some of the color underneath to show through um, so that it's these are green spots, sun spots, not just white. We, we actually want some of the color underneath to show through and it just looks more believable. And let's say um, there's an area you want to smooth out more before it gets to the highlight. Just put some of that colored pencil right there. Smooths it out a little bit. All right. Let's see what's that looking like. Okay. Always good to take a step back and look at look at it from a distance. All right, so now what we're gonna do to help these uh, spots kind of like get pushed back a little bit. Um, oh, this part right here I've been wanting to highlight. Yeah, there we go. And then with that favor castle, just look at how easy it is to put some more green if you want to put more green on there. Like, they just they go together so well. Watercolor and colored pencil. So, so cool. All right. So, let's see here. Um, this area right here, I'd like to darken it up. I could do it with colored pencil, um, but I'm having so much fun with the watercolor. I'm just going to use some of the watercolor. So here we go. There, that just kind of pushes it back a little bit. Just a little bit. We don't want it to push back too much, but. Drawing off the brush to help make that transition smoother. Okay. 
Okay. What else? There's more. Oh, well, you know what? Let's um, let's put in some more purple in this to make this shadow right here more interesting. So we'll put in purple right there in the direction of the skin. There we go. Oh, that's so cool. Um, what else do we want to do? Maybe a few little dots. Dark, dark little dots, maybe. Okay. This area needs to be darker. Touching the... This area, just, we don't want a halo effect right there. All right. This area is dry, so we could put another layer on if you want this to be smoothed out more, um, which is not a bad idea. Let's get some more opaque black. Bam. There we go. We're gonna just treat it like um like a dry brush, just gonna dry it off and blend. So I, I hope this helps. Um, the more realistic you want to go, you just spend more time on it. Like we could make this, we could make this look even more realistic. For instance, the the transition right here, we could uh, make that a little smoother, right? So let me just show you real quick. Get some of that green. Actually, let's use some of the light yellow green there. And let's just kind of put a nice glaze there. Dry off the brush and blend in. Blend it, blend it, blend it. That's probably the best trick that I've shown you in this tutorial is to dry off your brush to blend, it, to cause these gradients. Um, I want this to be a little bit more interesting, so I'm gonna take some of that purple, and I don't see a huge difference between dark purple and this brilliant green purple. Why is it called brilliant green purple? Maybe they want you to use it with green. Okay, look at that. That's that's cool, but it needs to be blended in because it draws a little bit too much attention. So we blend it in. There we go. Get some of that black. Some of these spots down here are beautiful. 
they're just they're done by the brush the brush decided in the paper the brush and the paper decided what to give and take and created some of those cool effects all by itself I found uh, painting is a lot more enjoyable when you do work with the paint you let the paint um, choose how to what to do sometimes so which is weird because in realism um, you want everything to be like controlled and but you actually achieve realism the more you kind of let go and let the medium do its strengths um, look at that that's beautiful i like how the the white from the surface kind of bleeds into the apple in certain areas like right here that's beautiful all right i'm gonna get a, an eraser because i want to take off some of the lines there i also want to come back in and just put a glaze right there And then dry it off, blend it. There we go. Look at that. That technique is amazing. I used to think you couldn't blend very well with watercolor, but you can with this technique. It's a beautiful technique. I got my kneaded eraser. Helps take off any type of crumbs and stuff too. So. All right, got my knee eraser and I'm just kind of getting rid of There we go. I want to show you a little trick. See this water is dirty. It's dirty with all the colors we used. Think about that. So if I take that dirty water and I just kind of go over this area. Okay. Gonna feel like it belongs there and it does because we've been using all these colors and it's gonna just go with those colors so well and I want this to be a little bit more blended right there look at that that's so cool All right, something that I needed to, uh, I saw after I stopped filming was uh, the edge here. Apparently I didn't see how, how um, that little guy right there, um, I need to blend him in better. So I'm gonna take some color there and blend him into the back there better. There we go. Um, some things that I could also do, which I which I which I will. <laughs> um, I'm gonna. I just want some more texture. I want some more texture here. So let's put some texture. There we go. Some texture there. There. That's what I'm going for. Right. Okay. All right. We could put some texture there. Why not? I really like this piece. It is, it, I'm happy with it. So, spending more time on it is not a bad thing. But, I mean, but it's up to you, like how detailed you want it to be. You could quit anytime or, or just stop anytime. You're not quitting, you're not a quitter. Just, 
Like, all right, I'm ready to paint the next thing. Something that could be very fun is to make the shadow purpley. I think that would be cool. Let's do it. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. That will tie in some of the purples we used in the apple too. So. So that, yeah, that's good. That's good. That just using opposite colors, contrasting colors or complementary colors like green and purple. They just, it's like icing on the cake. Your eyes just love it. They don't know why. There we go. So there you go. And if I, let's say I really wanted to make this smoother and smoother, just let it dry, put another layer, let it dry, put another layer. Or get out your colored pencils, uh, let it dry completely, get out your colored pencils, and then help make that, that smooth transition with colored pencils. But now anything, now we're getting into the nitpicky, like, do we want to take up some of this right here? Do we want it to stay? Um, just want to get it, kind of take away some of that. Apparently we don't, we want to keep it there. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see, what's another trick I could tell you? Okay, gel pen, sometimes a gel pen can bring a nice touch. So let's say you want to, we use this gel pen right here. Just just a little bit right here. See? Also right here. There we go. Just a little touch. And it goes a long way. Alright guys, if you like this, don't forget to hit the like and and uh, subscribe so you don't miss the next one.